Hi, I'm Adam Elliott. I'm a farrier, more specifically a natural hoof care practitioner. So for those of you that don't know what that is, I go around on a monthly basis and trim horses' feet. That's my, that's my full-time job. I started out in 2006 in a traditional apprenticeship as a farrier, shoeing horses with steel shoes and nails. We did that for a few years. It turned into a full-time gig and then down the road, we, we got introduced into natural hoof care and, and started trimming a little bit differently and, a, and on a more frequent scale and using rubber hoof boots and, and padded insoles instead of the old uh, horseshoe model. And so it's working out good for us and that's, that's what we do these days. After I got into natural hoof care, we, we switched our trim cycle down from six weeks to four weeks. And we're trimming in a manner that kind of mimics the way horses wear their feet in the wild. So those are the two big components. We're, we're trying to simulate natural wear and we're doing it more often. So when you do it more often, you create a reaction in the horse's body that creates a stronger foot and, and increases the growth rate. So we take horses that may have needed shoes in the past and we put them in a position, despite domestication, that where they're able to thrive barefoot. Yeah, it's a package deal. I mean, natural hoof care is, is kind of a holistic way of looking at things. So I'm not just going out and, and trimming their toenails and that's it. You know, I'm looking at the overall health of the horse. I'm, I'm looking real specifically at the diet and in some ways I'm looking at the environment in which they're, they're living, their, their pasture slash stall conditions. Um, and we're trying to make all that work together to overcome domestication. I prefer natural hoof care for a few reasons. One, it gets us out of horses standing on a plate of steel and driving nails through the feet, which, don't get me wrong, it has its place and has had its place, but I think we have better technology and, and better options in today's era. If I'm not shoeing and I'm going the natural route and everything's barefoot and then I'm, I'm using these rubber hoof boots for protection when necessary, then I have the ability to give the horse back its natural arch. And so if I can give back the natural arch, then that gives a higher degree of shock absorption and energy dissipation when the horse loads its foot. Also, you know, obviously a, a rubber boot with a padded insole is going to be more cushion and more comfort than a, a band of steel. One of my favorite aspects of this business is is not only working with the horses but it's the customer relationship um, so especially with natural hoof care going more often on a, you know on a four-week basis uh, we see these people a lot and we we get to interact with a lot of different people uh, all types of people uh, on a frequent basis and, and the relationships you develop there are a really special part of my work and so you get to you get to interact with them on a, on a really cool level and, and kind of share life with each other. The customers are responding well. I think it's a growing niche within the hoof care industry. Um, there's certainly more people that are aware of natural hoof care and that are looking for it um, than there was 10 years ago. And, and so there's a need for practitioners like myself. And even the ones that don't know what natural hoof care is, there's a, there's a high percentage of the horse owning community who who are of the opinion that they don't want shoes and they just they just want to maintain their horses barefoot and go out and go trail running and have a good time or, or you know contesters or whatever discipline they might be um, but for whatever reason they're just happy barefoot and so if I can go out every month and trim their horses and and make them healthy and happy and they can go out and have fun on them then everybody's everybody's happy.